We begin with the Biden administration's plans to put in place the most ambitious climate regulation to date in a bid to force Americans to switch to electric cars. And it would require nothing short of a revolution in the U.S. auto industry. The toughest ever EPA emissions proposal would begin in 2027 and require carbon dioxide levels from new cars to drop by nearly 50% on average and effectively require a staggering two thirds of all new car sales to be electric by 2032. Right now they're only 6%, so people aren't dying to do this. The Biden administration says the new restrictions will help protect our nation's future from the impact of climate change. Show us the science. We're just waiting for that. Uh, despite hesitation from Americans to adopt electric vehicles, the White House continues to tout President Biden's green agenda, saying in a statement, quote, as a car enthusiast and self-proclaimed car guy, President Biden is seizing the moment. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> EPA Administrator Michael Regan spoke on the new proposal just a few minutes ago. That EPA is proposing the strongest ever federal pollution technology standards for both cars and trucks. Together, today's actions will accelerate our ongoing transition to a clean vehicle's future, tackle the climate crisis head on, and improve air quality for communities all across the country. Bill Hemmer, mm. the average cost of a new yep. EV was over $64,000 last year. We'll pop those numbers up on the screen compared to 28,000 average for a gas powered car. The transition in energy mm -hmm. has to be parallel to the transition we can make with our money. Yeah, look at that. Wow. That's, uh, that's, you know what that is? That's sticker shock as I look at that right now. Um, he's going to raise some money off of this, you know, for the green agenda. Certainly that, that's going to happen. I just ran into Johnny in the hallway uh, for the <laughs> Jesse show. And <laughs> on Monday, Mayor Adams opened up um, an EV charging station yes. in Brooklyn. Yep. And Johnny said, I want to go check it out. So he went there on Tuesday night. Uh, it was broken and it was surrounded with caution tape. Oh. Um, and it, it wasn't crime working. Scene. I mean, I know the just, crime is bad, just, Brooklyn, yeah. but so, what happened? Yeah, we got some work to do, okay? Just yeah. anecdotally here. I think the war on cars has been more evident in New York City than anywhere else uh, in America. Yeah. I think this started at the end of the Bloomberg administration, which was pre de Blasio, right? Uh, when they ripped up all the streets and moved all the parking lanes in and right. set up all the, the bike lanes, forcing people to make a decision for mass transit. That was the objective. It continues to be that way. And this proposal is a reflection of yeah. it. Yeah. And when they, they move those bike lanes in, people now are getting hit by electric bikes because they're not riding the old you school know, bikes. They're Harris. riding the motorized ones, the, which I think can run on gas, but usually electric. Yeah. The EV, I'm, some of these bikes are going 35 miles an hour. They're zipping yes. by and they're like, well, that's, in a bike that's lane. A, right New York City is a dangerous city to begin with. All right. And now you've got these Foreigners from all over the world who come to the city have no idea where they're going, and they're on these bikes. And I'm uh, one of them. I live in Jersey. <laughs> well, it, bad things are bound to happen, um, and that—that's the course the city has set itself on. And unfortunately, I don't think it's going back. So, yeah. Kellyanne, when you look at the numbers and and the pricing of things, those numbers are not going to budge for one of these critical reasons that Steve Forbes just shared with me last hour. The batteries are expensive. Uh, they're not. You know, you have to replace them if you get into a car accident and they burn any amount. They're very dangerous to put out those battery fires. But we are making China richer. They mine all the minerals that make over half the world's batteries. I mean, we are make, why do we, why does Biden want to do that, representing all of us as Americans? I think the same reason he has declared war on fossil fuels, the oil and gas industry, much like the way Hillary Clinton said, I'll put the coal miners right out of business. I said, thanks for the free commercial <laughs> back then. And much, much the same way Harris said, out of spite, not even ideology, mm -hmm. he canceled those pipelines, those domestic pipelines, and with it went 42,000 U.S. jobs. Joe Biden is the jalopy of cars. He's like the worst <laughs> messenger to tell the rest of us <laughs> totally. to, to drive electric. And we're almost at the one year anniversary. April 22nd will be one year since Joe Biden got an Air Force One, which he emits about 254,000 something an hour, a lot, and went 4,700 miles round trip to Washington State. Went from Washington DC to Washington State on Earth Day to talk about saving the environment and being conservationist. They don't, they're not even good, they're not good at optics, they're not good at substance, and he's a car guy. When I think of Joe Biden and cars now, I think of the Corvette in his garage next to Which the classified documents, <laughs> not electric. Neither is he, by the way. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> I, want, I want to plug him in a little bit more often and see how he goes. <laughs> Just one more thing about China that I didn't know this until Steve Forbes said it to our audience last hour. It is going to take a lot of lithium mining. They're willing to do it. We are not willing to do it. So we, we're going to have a hard time changing where the batteries are, mar are made because you need that ingredient for the batteries. It's very bad for the earth. He said you're going to do much more earth cutting than you would ever do wow. with a transition from fossil fuel to whatever is next. He said, why do we think it has to be electric? That's exactly right. You need lithium, as you point out, for those electric batteries. And according uh, to one independent energy organization, uh, China has 75% of lithium reserves. To your point, that's an enormous amount. So what we're doing here is making China richer. We lower our emissions. China doesn't lower theirs. And we know if, if you're a believer in global warming, it is a global endeavor, meaning China admits we make them richer and the American consumer loses. That's what's happening here. Uh, also, there's some selling to do on the part of the Biden administration. Gallup says only 39% think this will help climate change. Only 12% are considering an electric vehicle, vehicle. No wonder with that price tag. So this is a president trying to redesign the economy. Best of luck with that. We saw cash for clunkers, how that turned out when the government intervened in the car <laughs> industry. <laughs> and you would need, to Bill's point, 35 million more charging stations. Maybe we can devote one to Joe Biden, to Joe as Biden. Uh, Kellyanne excellently <laughs> pointed out. Well, whoever built the one in Brooklyn, let's not use that as our blueprint. No. Right. No. Whatever happened to it, some <laughs> mystery person came along and destroyed it. Right. Anyway. You guys, Biden's not a car guy. Are you kidding? He's not a car enthusiast. If he were, he wouldn't be pushing this absurd proposal. And the only reason why he can enjoy his 67 Stingray, in part, is because it's a pre-emissions vehicle. He gets all the brakes. He doesn't have to comply with the standards that every everyone in their new cars do. I have to point out too that just two years ago, remember the proposal that came out of this administration, that was less than half of what this new proposal was. And at the time, that was considered a stretch. And they couched this by saying, oh, don't worry about it. You're gonna get tax breaks. You're gonna get credits. But guess what happens April 18th? In its infinite wisdom, this bloated, incompetent federal government will release new regulations that actually make less people eligible for these tax breaks. And keep in mind as well that they only apply if you make a certain amount of money and if you're purchasing, purchasing right. a certain type of EV. And so when they say, oh, you're gonna save $4,000 on a used EV, up to $8,000 on a new one, Kelly Book value 58 up to 64, as you pointed out, it's not, it's not gonna work. What does work is good old human power and good old fossil fuels. You guys remember when those miners, the coal miners in West Virginia had to push an electric car? That's what works. They, there they are right there on the screen. Human power. So in terms of the, of, of the slogans of the actual proposal of the substance, this proposal comes nowhere close. So why are we a target, Kellyanne? I mean, I do feel like the gas stove, the air conditioners, yeah. Like, why target the American people, which, you know, Kaylee just pointed out, our pocketbooks have been thin over the last few years because of high inflation, high prices. It's an industry he thinks he can vilify very easily, uh, Joe Biden, which is, is in direct contradiction to how he behaved mostly as a senator. But I think they're always appealing to youth. And they're and ah. in, in so doing, they misunderstand youth again and again, too. How in the world can you afford any car under Joe Biden's economy when young people are saying, I can't find necessarily a, a well-paying job, meaningful, that's consequential? They can't afford a car of any type. They can't, they're going to have life interrupted. The kids are not all right, I call it. Some of it's loss learning and declining test scores of a certain age because of COVID. But much of it is economic uh, decline for many of these people. They are deferring and delaying or denying altogether the natural accoutrements, marriage, parenthood, buying your first home, getting out of college debt, getting out of personal debt, having something for a rainy day, a sunny day. So they're not, they're with Kaylee's poll. They're not going to buy these electric cars. They're just going to say, yeah. he's going to think they are. All right. That was interesting, the point about age, though, because he's a lot further away from that younger group than even we are, and I'm pretty old. Decades. <laughs> hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts, Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany, on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern, or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.